Forgive me, fellow beer geeks, for I have sinned. It was about a year and a half ago, and I was up in a liquor store in the Minneapolis area. It was a great liquor store, had a phenomenal beer section. I was just going nuts, scanning the aisles. I noticed uh, a beer there in cans. Didn't give it a second thought, didn't even pick it up, didn't touch it. Don't know why. It's a big mistake. I promise I won't do it again. I didn't have an open mind. The beer I passed over in cans, Surly from the Surly Brewing Company in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. I think I suffered from what a lot of beer geeks have had in the past, that you don't think a serious beer can come in a can. I'm here to tell you that's wrong, it's bad, stop thinking that way. Before I get into the details of that, I want to talk a little bit about the history of beer in cans. The first canned beer came out in 1935, it was Kruger's Cream Ale, and it had a lot of resistance to it initially from the public. They'd never seen beer in a can. They had heard rumors and talk that uh, if you put beer in a can, it will develop metallic off flavors, which by the way is true, but those cans were lined as are cans of today to, uh, to help stop that interaction. It was just an odd package. You know, the, uh, the first beer in cans had a sort of a flat top. How do you, how do you get at that thing? Well, they came up with a newfangled invention, the church key, the beer can opener. You simply hooked it over the rim, popped a few holes in it, then you could get to your beer. These styles of beer cans were basically reserved for rather large breweries because you had to invest in all new equipment. Now, the beer can that came out for smaller breweries was what was known as the cone top can because these could be filled using existing canning lines. They took a uh, familiar bottle cap, just like bottles, and were fairly easily integrated. Those cans sort of coexisted until the 50s when the uh, cone top cans sort of fell out of favor as breweries upgraded their packaging lines. The flat top cans sort of fell away in the uh, early to mid 60s to be replaced by the, uh, the tab top can. Didn't require a key, church key, you could just open it up and get to the beer. There's one problem with these though. People would pull these off, drink their beer or soda, discard these, people would step on them, cut themselves, not environmentally friendly. In the 70s, they came up with the, uh, the top that stays with the can, which is nice, just one piece, nothing to throw away. The uh, beer open, you were able to pour that. This brings us today, and more specifically, to craft beer. You know, the first uh, craft beer in a can was produced, or is produced, by the Oscar Blues Brewery in Lyons, Colorado. They started canning in November of 2002 uh, on a tabletop canner, canning two cans at a time. They again uh, met public resistance. Uh, people didn't take them seriously, not thinking that a microbrew in a can can't be any good because at the time they were used to the major manufacturers canning their beers. Well, that sort of snowballed and now there are many breweries that are can microbreweries that are canning their beers. Uh, the Surly Brewing Company, as I'd mentioned, uh, the Maui Brewing Company, and uh, even New Belgium in Colorado is starting to can their fat tire beers. Now the advantage for the microbreweries is that it's a lot lighter um, to have beer in a can. So if you're trying to promote an active lifestyle, bicycling, camping, fishing, it's a lot easier uh, uh, to throw a six pack of cans into a backpack than uh, bottles, so you're not having to contend with all that weight. Also, uh, of course, you want to pack your empties out from wherever you go, and empty uh, beer cans are considerably lighter than bottles. Um, you know, the, uh, the, proof is, the proof is in sort of the pudding, so let's, let's see what this thing tastes like. Now, microbrewers that can their beers always emphasize that they want you to pour their beers into a glass. The reason that is, is it sort of eliminates your lips touching any part of the metal can, which, which, can, uh, which can impart sort of a metallic taste to their beers. And in fact, if you'll notice on the, uh, the Surly, uh, they make it quite obvious that they want you to pour their canned beer into a glass. Terrific hop aroma and flavor, a little bit of toffee, 
and coffee malts going on there. Fantastic beer. I guarantee you that if you hadn't seen me pour that from a can, you would not be able to tell that that was the packaging used. Bottle leader. Cans are good. Cans are fun, they make a lot of noise. And you know what? The one thing you really can't do with the bottle, can't do that with the bottle. For SiouxCityJournal.com and the Subaru blog, I'm Tim Hines.